Hey guys, how are you doing? Hi. Hello. Pretty good. I'm fine. Yeah. Actually, very fine. <laughs> fine seems so um, mediocre. Yeah. It's a very it's Finnish weekend, way of so... saying. Finnish people never exaggerate. They're they're always just fine or good. Yeah, it's always yeah. Everything is fine, even without yeah. without uh, a leg and bleeding is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're fine. My house burnt down and I'm missing a leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, let's uh, introduce yourself because uh, you are from a band called Vere. Am mm -hmm. I pronouncing that right? Yes. Yes. And uh, would you mind to tell us more about your band? Well, which it was is gonna start. Get it? Um, oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, well, <laughs> it, it was supposed to start as a um, joke to create. Uh, apparently, created the like very brutal heavy metal with um, kind of joke ish Finnish lyrics but then the guys uh Sokwe and Aksu noticed that you know the songs are pretty good so that they're too good to be a joke so that's when I got the phone call or actually I got the phone call before that that you want to join this joke band I was like well, yeah fair enough it's never going to go anywhere well I'm, I'm down and then it started to transition into a like a real band and then in this midsummer party a few years ago, we spotted Marko Pekka, who used to play in our previous um, project as well. So we spotted him and we were like, you know, when we got him to have some alcoholic be beverages. So we kind of persuaded him to like, you know, join our band. And so that formed four guys in a band and started as like Saku singing the lead vocals. Yeah, it was around when Bernard joined us that we started to like think about it. Like we had a couple songs, but they were like pretty good. And we started to wonder like, uh, would we kind of throw them away if we just did like this kind of very punky, jokish lyrics and uh after like we were doing one of the demos with uh Saku and marco and we were talking about it and i left there and i sat in my car and i just had an idea and i started writing lyrics and uh eventually that became the first song that we recorded mechanomania and I remember just sitting there, I wrote them down, I sent them to Saku right away. And uh, the next day, he sent like uh, over the night demo that he had made with the lyrics and uh, wrote a new song. And we were like, oh yeah, that's good. That's a good start. And then we just decided, well, let's do it. Let's do like real stuff. Yeah, and so far, you at least uh, on uh... wait, wait the word <laughs> down on the is it platform? Yeah, you can find yeah. two singles from from you. Am I right? Uh, two double yeah. singles, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and now you are uh, working on a hippie. Yes five songs in total yeah and this time we've got a, like a real singer because after the second release saku adamantly told his opinion that he doesn't want to sing anymore like he he just wants to play guitar and like occasionally sing uh and growl like harmonies and and those stuff so then we found artu from a like previous band as well we just Accidentally, we were at the same um, metal festival, and he just, you know, told us that it, it would be fun to like maybe do something together in the future. And then me and Saku looked looked at each other, like, you know, 
there's our guy. <laughs> and that was six weeks before our gig. And Artu learned all of the songs in six weeks and performed them live. And it's really, you know, I appreciate that a lot. Like that's, that it's not a, not, not the easiest task to be honest. Yeah. Because at the first we were like talking, like maybe I can do like two songs. Then mm-hmm. it was four songs. And in the end he was like, fuck it. Let's just do them all. And we were like, like hell yeah. Like one week because before the gig. He, yeah. It was like one week before the gig. Like may, maybe I can do all of the songs. We're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's nice. Um, and talking about again your hippie, uh, when <laughs> should it be released, more or less? Probably, um, let's say in the spring, early spring, maybe. Yeah, I'd say spring is a. Uh, it leaves it open enough because you never know what happens in the process, but. Obviously, we're aiming to get it out as soon as possible, but... Good. Yeah, last time we had hardware failures and those things delayed the release. It, it We were probably like aiming to release the last um, single release probably like in February at first, but then we moved so, it yeah. to... Yeah, then we moved it to like what, May? May, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we leave some room for that because you never know mm-hmm. gonna knock the wood so um if something happens like with the hardware and that so then we're we have more time that we're not saying that we release it on january or february so probably like late winter early spring yeah more or less yes yeah, yeah. and uh, next week uh, you are going to play in helsinki uh to the competition uh, uh to uh, M- 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 how does they pronounce because i don't know we in rally fin- finish we say it emergenza so i will say <laughs> yeah. if uh, if i read as uh, italian is emergenza but i don't know yeah if someone know can write in the comments and give us some advices <laughs> so yeah. how many bands are going to to be in this competition I think they said uh, when we went to the like info meeting, they said that in the Helsinki starting rounds, there's going to be 80 bands. And I think in Tampere and Turku, there's going to be like around 30 bands. So uh, I'm not good in math. So <laughs> I think that there's Hello. around a little less than 150 in total. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel about about this? Um, we're gonna go there and we're gonna do our best to succeed. And the rest is up to the voters. We we can't like tell them to make us winners, but we're gonna do our absolute best to impress them enough to make yeah. us win. Yeah. Well, like probably like the main target is to keep, give the people a good show like yes the other the other stuff it, it doesn't matter that much obviously it's it would be f- like fun and a good thing to um advance like you know go to the semifinals or what you know progress in the competition or even win but you know the main target is to just give the people a show yeah yes yeah, so, like and enjoy because yeah, you course. have to enjoy what you are doing. Yes. Like uh, this year, we didn't have that much time to um, actually do shows that much because, you know, we had the new singer coming and um, planning about the EP and all that stuff. So, like next year, we're trying to get as many shows as possible. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. especially in summer, we're aiming to get as much as possible. Yeah. Because then we should be at least done with all the work for the EP. So that yeah. should be out of the way so we can focus on doing gigs. Yeah, that's nice. Um, you also are involved in another competition, uh, Come to Latin America. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, I don't know how long this competition has been going on because I just realized it, uh, I think, at the end of summer when uh, I did an interview with uh, Where's My Bible and they were going to, because they won the competition, so mm-hmm. they went to Latin America tour. Yeah. So I don't know much about this this competition, but maybe you can tell us more. You want to go? <laughs> uh, well, I haven't kind of like delved so deep into coming to Latin America. I've been focusing on the emergenza stuff, but for what I know is that the competition sort of kicks off in February and like that's why we have been aiming to get the EP out in the spring so that we can like boost our visibility with that. And uh, we just decided to go in there because we want to give it a shot. Like, why not? Like, yeah. Who doesn't want to perform in Latin America? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's why probably like that's the main reason. And also, obviously, visibility things. And but it it seems an interesting like idea. So, yeah. so we're interested in it as well. And also, like they, the whole come to Latin America, they have been very supportive as well. And it seemed that they have like our music as well. So that, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, let's talk again about your music. Uh, um, what can we expect about the, this? EP. Well, um, I'd say it. We're now really finding like our thing. Like we're now re- refined. I would maybe say, like, don't get me wrong. I love our previous releases, and they've been very good songs. But like, they're sort of the road to where we're now. Like. Now we've really like found what's our thing, and uh, there's gonna be, I'd say, a lot of variety. Like there's gonna be the fastest and the most brutal song that we've made, but there's also gonna be the slowest one we've made, which can all almost drop into the category of a uh, power ballad. And uh, there's just, we've found some interesting new ways to like make the songs. And uh, we've had a lot of fun doing them and playing them. Okay, sounds good. So we Thank have you. got to wait and, uh, and hear what, what you did. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hope the people that listen it listen to it, they have as much fun listening to it as we have had making it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, um, it's like we do it seriously, but not like dead serious because we're kind of well humorous people. We don't take ourselves too seriously. So, um, that that's I hope that y- you can like see that in our music and our um stuff that we do so um, i'm looking forward to it that the reactions yeah. are all the songs going to be in finnish yes yeah why did you choose to to do it in finnish and not in english uh, we thought about it at some point that should we do it in english but we started when we started this project as the therapy version that it was uh we did the joke lyrics in finnish and then when we started to shift to the more serious matters uh we just kept on going in finnish and it seemed to work and catch up and uh we just decided to keep it going and it's actually been kind of fun because i do most of the lyrics and before this band i always wrote my songs in english 
So it was kind of a learning process for myself to, to learn to write in Finnish, but I've really grown to enjoy it. And I think fin Finnish is an underrated language. And there's like, it gives m me more tools to like create lyrics that have an effect, I think. It's more, more natural. Yeah. You don't have to think too much because uh, when you when you write in a language that is not yours, you have to put um, more effort. I think, uh, but there is more thinking. Is this right? Does it sound okay? Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it also, it's a beautiful language. Like it is. It is. So that's that's one of the like. I have never played in a band that sings in Finnish. So at first. I was skeptical about the idea. I was like, mm, like I've never done this. It's mm, but but you know now I've grown to like it a lot, and like the ly lyrics that we have, they they're good as well. I really like them, and I don't know. It's a beautiful language, so yeah. why not? Yeah, I agree that is a beautiful language. And uh, before moving to Finland, I was listening to a lot of a uh, Finnish band that the song were and are still in Finnish. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that there are a lot of people around the world that love to listen to Finnish music. So, yeah. And to Finnish metal. So that's, uh, that's, I think that that is a good thing. And uh, I would like to hear more, you know, more band to be brave and use their own mother language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, obviously, well, there's the thing that, you know, if you write, li write lyrics in English, obviously, it's going to open more doors to, a, you know, like abroad. Like, I don't, I'm not saying that Finnish wouldn't open doors to going abroad, but it makes it harder. But, you know, it's like, I'd say the target for us is not seeking the maximum amount of fame and that's just we do it because we like it so and yeah. we hope that other people like it as well so i don't know yeah yeah it makes sense and it's important to do what you like and not mm -hmm. do it because you want to reach the fame but music is hard so you should do what you feel yes yeah like not not once have I had a feeling that we like when we have re rehearsals that oh, I'm not I don't feel like going. Not not once. So like with previous bands, you know, there might have been like you know some some of those instances that uh, I'd rather do this or this than blah blah blah. But like like this band now, it's the stuff is good. The guys are so fun. The humor that we have together is. It's wild. <laughs> so like we have a ton of fun every time, even though like I might be tired, slept for like two hours last night and whatnot, hungry, grumpy. But when I go to the rehearsal space, it's all gone. And yeah. it's all it's all laughs. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful thing. And I think that in a band, it's important that when you go to release or where you are working with your bandmates, uh, you are feeling good with them, that there is not yes. a friction, let's say. Mm -hmm. Even For if out... sometimes in life, uh, you never know, sometimes there, yeah. there is some, something going on, but uh, it should not be all the time. Yes. So, like, for out, like, people from the outside, sometimes it might seem that we argue or that we have a heated argument going on, but it's part of our humor. Like, somebody does something and somebody just, you know, screams from the bottom of their lungs, like, you know, what are you doing? And, you know, goes for full haywire. And everybody just goes in to that thing and does it. And then, like, five minutes later, when the, you know, argument is over we just all laugh and you know it's it's kind of kind of our thing <laughs> yeah hey but let's talk about metal music in general how did you get into metal music when did you start to listen to metal 
Well, if I'll go first, um, I was around maybe 10 years old when my brother introduced me to Megadeth and uh, that just caught up me, with me from the beginning and Megadeth is still like one of my absolute favorite metal bands and I started quite basic route like from Megadeth to Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, Pantera, stuff like that. And then I eventually just started finding new things. And uh, nowadays, I'd say I don't anymore listen to that much metal music, actually. Like, I do still listen to my favorites every time, like, they release something new or just for refreshment, I have a lot of spotify playlists where i listen to the good old classic stuff and uh but metal music has always been like a big thing for me like i've always wanted to play metal music and i've had some unsuccessful attempts to form bands in the past but i was very lucky when i met Saku and we were able to kick this thing off and how it caught up and yeah and Marco Pekka and Arto joined and things started to get off and I think I'd like to think at least that you can see and hear the presence of our favorite bands in the music in sort of like a siphon way like all of that what we've listened has influenced it in a way and the thing is that most of it is not metal okay. that too there yeah is a lot because of stuff that isn't metal yeah because to be fair like let's like for me example i was a kid i first listened i heard the slit knots nameless from some um album that had like a bunch of different metal bands and you know and that song was like maybe the third track that was like maybe probably like six years old. I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna double this. <laughs> it's like dad. <laughs> and um, but I really listened to like Guns N' Roses, um, Iron Maiden, and, and all that stuff when I was a kid. But like early teens, metal caught up to me, and then I was in my first metal band, and um, so. But after that, really, like, I haven't really listened to metal that much. Like, this year, my most listened um, category or or genre of music was synth wave. Okay. And that's been going on for a long time. And same with Saku, for example, who also composes a lot of the music that we play. Um, he doesn't listen to metal. And so, like, we play metal, but we don't really listen metal. So that's hey. that's why, like, you know, there's a lot of aspects in the music that are not metal in a way, but we make it metal. Yeah. So. But I think it's also important to listen a bit of everything, not just one one thing. Yeah. So you need to be yeah. open minded, and then of course everybody has some kind of music that is a big no. <laughs> that mm -hmm. is like not my thing no thank you yeah. but uh, i think that most of people uh, enjoy different kind of music uh, for me for example yes i listen uh, mostly metal music and mm -hmm. according to spotify uh, i listen uh, mostly power metal even if uh, all the bands that were that were in the top five on the Spotify rap, um, only one at, at the fifth place was power metal, if we can still define them power. Well, with the whole album, yeah, Sonata Artica. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> other than that, uh, I was like, oh, interesting, because I have been listening more to extreme metal, but then there is a uh, sometimes pop up uh, something from from the past like <laughs> backstreet mm -hmm. boys <laughs> I, I i have been uh, not growing up with metal really so 
I have okay. everything from the past uh, sometimes popping up, but yeah, I think that it's uh, nice to listen to different genres. It's, a lot of metal people are going to hate me for saying this, but I really like Ghost. Because <laughs> um, it's like all the previous stuff, and now it's so ABBA that I love it. Because like I know that the songs are made like with with a grin like you know they're smiling like tobias is probably smiling and laughing his ass off while he's doing the most cheesy uh kind of rock pop songs and that's really the thing that I, that's the other aspect that i love it love i love about it is that um it's not done seriously in a way so but catatonia was one thing this year when they released their new album and that's like on the darkest months of winter. I listened to Catatonia, but when the summer came, it was all synth pop. And <laughs> so it depends on the, like the time of the year. That's what I listen to. On the mood. Yeah. 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 Now for me, this year was like, I listened to uh, Stamina a lot. They released a new album. I absolutely love it. And Stamina has always been like a very big band for me. Like, of course, because they sing in Finnish, they are and sort of an influence to the lyrics. But more than that, they're just one of my absolute favorites. And then I listened to the new Shade Empire album, which is absolutely great. And we actually played with them live recently. And it was yeah. just a blast. And, yeah, one album that I have to really give credit to was the my most listened to album in January this year, even though it was released like what two years ago, was Reckless Love's Turbo Rider. Oh yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that was so it's it's so shamelessly rock pop synth wave that I just can't help but love it. Like I know what Reckless Love was like before it was a very cheesy sort of uh they were going for some sort of metal crew vibe but now they just flew through the gates with turbo rider and it's just one of my absolute all-time favorite albums yeah i think it's a uh, maybe they their best album at least with um, with my taste but mm -hmm. yeah i also i saw was it last year? Last year I saw them live after a while and uh, also them on stage. Now they are different. So, hmm. uh, yeah, I've never seen them live. Yeah, it's, is, it, it's unfortunate. Yeah, but... yeah it's, it's a good band to see live uh, and uh, to enjoy their music. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, do you have a favorite? Uh, album in the metal or rock like an uh, all time yes all time favorite uh it's very very hard <laughs> to pick one <laughs> like uh, there are so many good <laughs> i could maybe make a top five or a top ten list like in the a same minute, one but you but have to just... make the decision one <laughs> <laughs> if I just had to pick like one single album, I would have to go back in time just because of the nostalgia and pick the album that really made me into Metalhead and say Megadeth's Rust in Peace. Mm. Like that that's an album that anytime I go back to listen to it, it never fails to get me excited. It's just an absolute perfect album from beginning to end. Yeah. I don't know. Well, mine is probably like the first one that comes to my mind that I used to listen to a lot uh, years ago is probably the Devin Townsend's Transcendence. It's that's probably one of the it's like, I don't know. I've listened to a lot of albums that I love, but not, nothing else comes to my mind now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a huge Stephen Townsend fan and always liked him like what what he does with different projects and 
and and even though like the new what was the empath record it was a fun weird but good <laughs> yeah <laughs> weird things are always yes <laughs> yes but he is like the musicality that the guy has is it's awesome like I, I have no words for that guy yeah he's a genius yes and i think he's the way Devin makes music has influenced us a lot because he's I would describe him as fearless when he's making music. Mm -hmm. we, we try to be as fearless as him like when we do our songs because we like to make choices that are not maybe that heavy metal but we just make them work in a heavy metal way. And talking about geeks, uh... What was the first uh, gig that you have ever seen? Ever seen? Yeah, um, the first one. For me, that was, uh, I was 12, I think, 12 or 13. And uh, it was in Helsinki, uh, in the old ice hockey hall. Uh, I went to see Megadeth. And they were opened by Enciferum and Wallbeat. And it was a very fun gig. And, but one thing that I do remember that really caught my eye back then, um, and Megadeth's bassist at the time was James Lomenzo. And uh, Megadeth had just released the uh, United Abominations album that has the song Gears of War, that has this very heavy, chunky riff at the beginning and i just remember that i could feel the bass beating my like whole body while he was playing that riff and after the gig my dad who was waiting outside to pick me up he was like he heard that part and from that day like i found the interest to play bass myself like i just wanted to do that same thing that he did there. Yeah. I cannot say this accurately enough for my part. It might be a gig that is related to some, like my father's gig, maybe when I, when I was like a really tiny kid, maybe. Or then it could be either a Velvet Revolver or Iron Maiden, maybe like in the early 2000s. Not sure. Okay, so your father is a musician. Yes, or was. Okay. He 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 hung up the guitars a long time ago, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and he was, was a musician. What kind of music was was he playing? Uh, well, he played back in the day some country music as well, uh, and then also the kind of like Rautalanka in Finnish. That kind of if you know Shadows, yeah, like that kind of music, and they were you know they toured Japan and uh, Europe as well and, and all that. So we played that as well as a side project back in the day as well. So I've played that music as well. Yeah. And also we were lucky to go abroad with that band as well years ago. And it was a fun music style. Like it's when you compare it to metal, it's kind of like being on vacation. <laughs> you, you can just enjoy the moment and just play simple beats and not like you don't have to exercise. <laughs> yeah. How do you get ready before a, before a, a show? Well, I don't know. It's just it's it's a lot of waiting. <laughs> um, I I've never really um, like I've my first gig was probably when I was seven or eight. So I've never really, you know, had those kind of like butterflies in my stomach, like that I have to prepare necessarily. But it's mostly, you know, before the gig, just sitting down, maybe talking with the guys and just basically waiting. I'm just like almost like eager to go there instead of being scared to, you know, poop less. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm the most inexperienced out of us. Like this band actually made me finally play the first gig of my life. And uh, for me, uh, it all has gone like surprisingly well. But I 
truly agree on the waiting part mm -hmm. uh like that's most of it like you just do everything you can to kill that time and take your mind away from the gig basically like that's what i try to do like i don't think about the gig before i get on the stage and then just start playing yeah yeah and there's there's some kind of mental preparing in a way but like yeah. as soon as the first song song you know starts it's all that like minor tension yeah. and all that that is gone so basically it's if i can say some kind of like how do how do i prepare it's more or less like you know today like you know we're gonna go out there and we're gonna show the people what we're capable of and then let's go yeah and uh, for Axeli, how was the first show? How did you feel? How did you feel on the stage? Um, well, I gotta say that it was an interesting one because uh, they were like a pre-Christmas party, and uh, I had just been very sick. Like I still had some mild flu on the gig day, and uh, there were some like time complications with it but in the end everything went well with that but i really don't remember that much <laughs> of it <laughs> like i do remember that we were there and we played and that's pretty much it like i don't <laughs> have any specific memories about what happened during the gig i remember the part before it and after it but the gig itself is like I was in the zone. Too. Yeah, you were you were in the zone apparently. Yeah. Well, it went well apparently. Yes, yes, it, it was went, very good. Yeah, and we had a lot of fun. Like, yeah, yeah, that's all good. of our gigs have been a lot of fun. Uh, we had like a lot of fun with ourselves, but with the other bands as well. And I hope that the audiences have also noticed that. Yeah, nice. But now let's take my jar of random, of random topics and let's see <laughs> what we are going to get this time. And it can be everything. I, I have a bad raffle lock, so please, please be something good. Please be something good. <laughs> 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 no, that doesn't. <laughs> but it's not good. Maybe it's not good for. Or maybe this one is more for girl, but I don't know. It's makeup. So. Well, I just had my nails done. So. <laughs> do you, yeah, we do don't, we don't uh, really use makeup. Any, but... any kind of, uh, you know, face paint? Or have you ever used any kind of face painting uh, during uh, your uh, career as musicians uh, on the stage? Well, maybe years ago um we had something like you know we we had a, a jar of dirt and we used that as you know to like make us look a bit like you know dirty and rub, rub it in the hands and face and clothes a bit but not not really have, like i don't remember that any of us have really used any kind of like stage makeup in the yeah. past we actually did started like a conversation about this topic recently because like our music in like short terms is sort of dystopian post-apocalyptic uh dancing around those themes and uh, we were thinking at least like in a music video or so we were thinking like we should consider at least like painting our faces and maybe on stage as well but we haven't got that far with the conversation yet but we had we have been thinking about it mm -hmm. okay, guess we'll so see what topic, happens yeah so this topic it was not that bad then no it, it was oh, not no, that bad then no yeah no. and actually pretty recent because it was like <laughs> in the last month or so i think yeah maybe hey, it was spot on then yes oh we will wait to see if you come out uh, with uh, face painting on. Eyeliners and yeah. <laughs> lipstick. <laughs> Do you think that you are going 
to do the face painting yourself if you are going to do it or do you need someone else to help well that's a tough one that's a tough one really because <laughs> that it, it really depends on the scenario because if it's gonna be like in a music video i think it's best that we really plan it ahead like we can do it ourselves probably but it depends on like what kind of face facial painting we want to use and if there's going to be like some sort of details in it like specific patterns or something it's maybe best to get someone who really knows what they're doing but if it's just going to be like we're going to put some dirt on our face <laughs> we're probably going to be able to do that ourselves yeah we we all being kids and we've had our own sandbox so we know how to look dirty <laughs> yeah. i was thinking that actually there are a lot of uh, you know band that are using uh, makeup uh, doing face painting or just makeup mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes yeah. i watch those videos or photos and i find that they they did by themselves and yeah and they are better than me. <laughs> I'm not oh. good in doing makeup. I'm good in doing Halloween makeup. So to do yeah. like a, a split face or things like this. But normal makeup, I'm not good. So maybe I need some advice from those, <laughs> from like, those magicians. I don't know, like all of Kiss, but at least Jean actually paints his own face still. So yeah. he does it all by himself. So, but um, I don't know, painting painting the face or using some kind of makeup. It's like always like I don't really want to do the same thing that others do because it's for me at least yeah. it's kind of controversial. That is there like too much people using makeup or like should we do it or should we not do it or is there something else that we can do that's probably not that many people have done. Yeah, so it's, it, it's really about the scenario too yes but we're open-minded we yeah. throw ideas and we, we'll see what we can come up with yeah so we will see yes <laughs> but let's get another another oh. topic let's see what's going to be now mm, this one no no this one feels better we got sport so are you into sport Music saved me from sports. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I used to play football and um, Taekwondo was a part of my life as well as a kid. And well, like overall as well, I was kind of like kind of athletic in a way. But, you know, it, that's long gone. Um, I'm not young anymore in, or not that young at least. So it's mostly music now. Well, I used to be very athletic when I was younger. Uh, I was I played floorball and uh, football, and then in my teens, I got really big into combat sports. I did wrestling and then shot, which is sort of MMA but with like I guess amateur like rules version of MMA. And, and that's uh, why I don't want to piss you off because I love my kneecaps. <laughs> don't worry, I'm a pacifist. <laughs> but nowadays, um, most of the sports that I do is that I watch them from TV. I I'm very enthusiastic about ice hockey. I watch basically every every ice hockey match that is possible uh, in the Finnish league, NHL. Uh, international competitions and uh, I know that I have at least somewhat been able to make Yere interested in ice hockey as well I'm at well, least trying to yeah but I <laughs> so used to I be have someone to talk about it yeah I, I used to be a lot like interested I used to like uh, watch NHL a lot but that I didn't watch NHL for years like five years at least and until we like met with Oxu again and start the band. So that's when I start to like a bit uh, watch the hockey scene. But hmm. 
that's yeah. like hockey is like the only sport maybe that I watch. I don't understand formula. Or I do like, understand it. It's pretty simple to understand. They have a car and they're going around the track. It's not a. It's not NASCAR. Yeah, the like, <laughs> track has curves and all, but oh, it's still the same. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, the idea is the same. <laughs> yes, but sometimes I... you have to turn right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, go, go on. <laughs> I actually, uh, I understand nothing about hockey. Because of course I I didn't grow up in Finland, so yeah. in Italy is not a thing. <laughs> mm. So it was interesting. Also, I live uh, eight kilometers from the center of Pori, even if it's not Pori. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, of course, in Pori, everybody talk about Assat and uh, and so on. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember two years ago, I was doing substitutions uh, in in a elderly house and uh, the physiotherapist that i was uh, doing that i was sub substituting uh, she had a student a second year student and um, then when she was not there he was with me and uh, everybody knew him there and I remember asking him, so before starting to study, because he was uh, older than me, so in, in his uh, 30s and oh, late 30s, uh, then I asked, uh, what what did you did you do before? I, I play hockey. Oh, were hmm. you a professional hockey player? Yes. Then uh, I checked the name and it was actually uh, the captain of Hassat when Hassat won. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, and everybody... So, some guy. Him. So, I was like, hey, no, I don't know who you are. <laughs> like, but... But, but that's the thing. They appreciate that more. Like, if you talk about, like, people that, you know, are, like, famous for sports or music, they have a lot of people that go, like, you know, to them, like, oh, notice me. You're, you're like, I like you and that. But when you go to talk to them, like a regular that they're regular people they're like okay fine let's talk usually so that's maybe that was that was for the best i guess <laughs> he is really a great person so kudos to him for everything that yeah. he did and uh, he will do in life but let's get <laughs> back to us <laughs> oh we got side uh, railed <laughs> now, now let's go to the most important thing about this interview and it's pizza yeah. do you like pizza yes absolutely so, what's your favorite pizza? Well, I'm a simple man, and uh, like I tr I like to try out different pizzas. Like whenever a new pizza comes out, I like to try it out. But it, the one that I always go back to is just plain old pepperoni pizza. Like I'm a simple man. Okay. Hmm. I usually take a fantasy pizza, which involves at least blue cheese. Blue cheese in every single pizza. Pineapple does not belong to a pizza. Change my mind. Or actually don't. Um, <laughs> but um, then there's usually like, well, a lot of meat. So it's usually ham or pepperoni or salami, whatever. And or kebab even or bacon. So there's a lot of meat. And actually one and also like from Koti Pizza. The burger pizza is actually a good one. It has salad on top of it and some sauce or mayonnaise. And it has some meat as well. I don't remember what exactly, but you have to... Open I think it. it's it's specified just as burger meat. Yeah, it's basically... It, it's a burger, but it's a pizza. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm curious to, to read what, uh, what people will say. <laughs> Mm -hmm. about uh, th this uh, this pizza because yeah in F in finland it's interesting that the pizza i don't i don't know about other countries i know other countries uh, it... but a lot of things going on on the pizzas <laughs> it's it's uh, interesting how different countries uh, and different way of doing yeah you I, I think all the italians are just um they think it's a disgrace how other countries make their pizzas 
and <laughs> so like I've heard from people that you know have been in Italy and actually like have they've had the authentic pizza experience and there's yeah it's nothing like in Finland or Sweden or Germany or whatever like every country has their own kind of adaptations of it but you know I guess we've kind of murdered the pizza <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is yeah <laughs> and um you know actually in finland in the last i think in the last five years at least uh the pizza cu culture uh is uh, become more in in a way i can say that it you can find more quality nowadays and there are pizzerias that are trying to do yeah the really pizza. and there are well in helsinki for sure there are italian pizzerias and uh, i eat last summer in uh, via tribunali and uh, it, it it was like italian pizza it it, it was the the the, the real okay. thing. Uh, <laughs> so but you know I also eat Coti pizza. Of course, I always mm. choose the same. It's always the same. It's always mozzarella. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally fine. I, I usually do that same when I find my favorite um like dish from like let's say from pizzerias or burger joints or whatever. Like I always kind of like stick to that in a way. But I also experiment other others as well. But usually if there's like, I have to make the decision now, it's the one and only. There's always that one. Yeah. Safe well, choice. Yes. A safe choice is always good. <laughs> yes. But, I don't like surprises. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, even if uh, Yere answered to the question that I'm going to do, I'm going uh -oh. to ask again because, you know, okay. The world is divided, and the most of things are on the yes side, except for here. No, there are more. <laughs> <laughs> um, does pineapple belong to pizza? Honestly, no. I've I've tasted pizza with pineapple sometimes, but I've yet to come across a combination where it would work. I, I don't like it. I've given it a, I've given it a shot and it hasn't been able to prove me. So I'm gonna say no. I think my issue with that is actually that I don't like um the 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 like what's it called? The canned like canned pineapple. It it tastes horrible, but like the fresh pineapple. Is a thing that I can eat and I actually like it. But I think that's the problem, maybe that it's canned pineapple that they have on pizzas. But then again, in a way, I don't think the taste of it really blends or adds anything to the, to the like to the pizza itself. So yeah. Well, I can eat it, but it's not on my list if I have to order it myself. Yeah. It's, it's the same with cheese and ham. Yeah, which, which, it's which one goes on top? Uh, you know, because uh, most of Finns so far said yes, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, all these metal pizza things started a bit with this uh, joking around uh, the pineapple on pizza and so on. <laughs> uh, it was a friend of mine that asked. Yeah. yeah. Asked me to ask to the band during the interview if. Uh, <laughs> pineapple belonged to pizza and then I was like I cannot ask now it's not about <laughs> pizza the interview <laughs> so th then I start to think about this metal pizza so let's say that the, the pineapple did something good make me do this <laughs> even if I don't know hmm. is it good is it not yeah it's good it's it's good let's let's say but yeah uh, pineapple hmm. is a big is a big no also for me it's yeah. uh, like I don't like I to think... sweet and salt. So yeah. Yeah. I mean pineapple just falls into the cat category. Like you can do 
sweet things in a savory dish, like honey chicken is, for example, a pretty mm -hmm. common thing. But pineapple just falls into that category. Like it's so sweet in a so sweet kind of way that it's very hard to interpret into pizza in a way that it would make it work in any kind. Yeah. And I don't like my food eating me back. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> yeah. It has to be one sided. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but uh, we are at the end of this interview. So thank you. Thank you so much for being my guest. And yeah, thank you for having us. It was a pleasure to talk with you. And I hope to see you in Pori next year, maybe. So let's hope so. Yeah. So we can uh, meet and uh, have a chat and uh, not eat pineapple. Pizza. <laughs> yeah, exclude, exclude the pineapple. It's not invited. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, would you like to say something to people that are watching this interview, watching or listening? Well, first of all, I hope you have enjoyed us being in here. And we enjoyed it absolutely. And we had a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to be releasing some pretty good songs next year. And you better go and listen to them because they're good. They're really good. And if anyone wants to offer us a gig, let's say, for example, in Pori, give us a call. <laughs> Could have not put it better myself. But yeah, if, if you know, somebody who listened to us and is watching this, thank you for listening to us and supporting us. And if somebody who's not listening to us and is watching this, go listen to us, please. <laughs> um, that, yeah. I don't know. Thanks for having us. It was a blast, and we really enjoyed this. Yeah, thank you so much. It was it was really nice, and I had fun, and you had a lot of interesting things to say. And now I'm just waiting for for your new music and uh, to see you live also, because live music is always the the important thing. I yeah, I enjoy yeah. to go and see bands live, and uh, uh, I take photos during gigs, so. Uh, it's what I'm going to do later today. <laughs> oh, in, yeah. In two hours, I'm going to to be in a geek place and uh, trying to to get some good shots from, yeah. from the band uh, and enjoying underground. Uh, <laughs> let, let's hope you get some good pictures and have a good time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>